All right, hey guys, it's Dr. Shell. Welcome to the Dr. Test Prep YouTube channel. This is gonna seem a little bit complex, this um, page, which is page 145 of my book. They're the harder examples. Like to me, this these pay questions would probably be like a 600 SAT score question, okay? Um, we are gonna use the slider tool, which I love. So you might need to watch this video a couple times is my point. That's why I split up the basic and harder videos, just so that if you need to rewatch the harder ones, it's easier to find them. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. It says, what is the value of B that would make the following equation tr be true for all real numbers? Let's take out this word B. So we are going to type it just like this. And then one of the things that's going to be most annoying is when we put that seven exponent in, it's not going to look like we put it in, but we did. So first we're going to type in A. We'll hit shift six or the AB button. Now you can't just do four plus B as an exponent. You have to put it in parentheses first. Then we'll use our arrow key to get that contained. Then we'll hit this button again and type in our seven, and it doesn't look like it's an exponent, but I promise you, as long as you hit that button, it is gonna register. We will add a slider for everything, and then just pick any numbers that you want, as long as it's not like zero, one to two, okay? So there we go, those are the numbers we picked. It doesn't have to be pretty at all. In our next one, we're gonna just type A to the 56. So what we're gonna do is our A is gonna stay the same, but we're trying to figure out our B value. So we are going to use the slider tool in order to get it the B, in order to get the top to be equal to 1.94266, blah, 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 blah. So if I move backwards, I can see that this number gets smaller and I don't want it to get smaller, I want it to get bigger. So I'm gonna keep moving it forward and now we have 10 to the 10th power. We're trying to get a number that's 10 to the 28th. So I'm going to keep moving forward. We're at 10 to the 17th, 10 to the 19th, 10 to the 24th. Remember, we're trying to get to 10 to the 28th. So we're going to keep moving. There we go. 10 to the 28th. What is our B value? Four. That's our answer. B equals four. And look what happens. To prove it, no matter what my A value is, it'll always be the same. So that's why I know B is four. Now, if I didn't use this, it is faster to do it without it. The faster way is because the bases are the same, we just would multiply these together and have it equal to be 56. So then we have 28 plus seven B equals 56. Subtract seven or 28 from both sides and divide both sides by seven. So that obviously is faster than typing it in, but I'm just saying that's how you could do it with Desmos. All right, this next one is not a Desmos calculator question, but I still wanna teach you my strategy that I showed you in the previous video because my strategy rocks. All right, let's first write it. Okay, so the whole idea of the strategy is where are there more variables? So if we look at A, we see that there's three A's in the numerator and there's negative two A's in the denominator. So if we're comparing three and negative two, would you rather have $3 or negative $2? I'd rather have $3. I mean, I'd rather have a million dollars, but in this case, I'd rather have three. So the A goes on the top. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit this gear delete all. What we're gonna do is now that we've done that, we're putting the bigger number minus whatever the smaller number. In this case, it's negative two. It's okay that there's two negatives together because it's big number minus smaller number. So that means next to the A, I'm gonna write a five. Then I look at my next one. So we've dealt with that. B four and B negative one. Four is bigger than negative one. So the B is gonna go on the top. In my calculator, big number minus whatever the little number is. In this case, it's negative one. So that will also be five. For letter C, I have one C on the top and negative three C's on the bottom. So would you rather have one dollar in your pocket or would you rather owe someone three bucks? I'd rather have a dollar versus owing someone money. So I'm gonna put the C here. Same technique, 
put one here because that's c to the first even though there's no exponent it just means to the first big minus whatever our smaller number is it's negative three so my numerator is four and i've canceled everything out i don't have anything left in my denominator so this just gets erased and that's my answer all right let's look at number six i love number six they're trying to make you do exponent rules but you just need to use the calculator like that's it so what we're going to do is i'm going to type it with x and y but we aren't going to be able to use the slider substitution tool too easily before you type in any fraction remember to always hit the division symbol first if it's not just like one third like if there's more stuff going on hit divide first that way you don't have to worry about um, parentheses so i am still going to type in x cubed and then y squared and then in the denominator i'm going to type x y shift six to the negative second and this is like i have no idea what you're talking about yeah and because it's x and y it's not going to give us a slider tool so we're going to make every x become a and we're going to make every y become b we could pick other letters but we're just going to do that i learned that also don't do the letter r now that we've done that i'm going to click all and it says my x which for us is a is three watch boom three our y value, which for us is b, is 2. Boom, 2. <laughs> That's my answer, 144. Like if this is a perfect one where it's way easier to type it into the calculator. Sometimes we have to take our variables and turn them into x's. Sometimes we have to take our x and y's and turn them into other letters of the alphabet. It's just how it is. Now, again, I want you to watch all my videos, but it's more important that you get practice. So stop watching my videos, go back to Khan Academy, go to unit eight, lesson two, do the practice examples. And then if you've got more time to study, please come back because we're going to be talking about operations with polynomials. See you soon.